welcome to video number two of reading weather station models. So today we're going to be understanding these pictures that we learned about the other day um, on our PowerPoint video, or earlier today, depending on when you've watched it. Uh, you need to have several different things with you to do this activity. The first thing you need is this piece of paper right here. It is found on our Google Classroom um, if you don't have it, so make sure that you get it or quickly screenshot a copy of this so that you can have that information with you. The next thing you're going to need is the next page of our notes from our fill in the blank notes packet where we have two examples. One where we have to draw a weather station model and one where we have to identify and read all of those. You should have some extra paper ju handy just in case and choose a wide variety of colors of markers because we're going to color code this first page of notes. So we're going to choose one of our colors, whichever one you'd like, and we're going to underline each of our little topics. So for example, anytime I talk about wind speed and wind direction, I'm going to use this magenta color. And then I'll use a brown color to talk about the barometric pressure and barometric trend. I'll use yellow to talk about precipitation. I'll use an aqua blue to talk about temperature. Green is going to be visibility. I have a blue-gray color, which I like for cloud cover, because clouds sometimes can be that gray color, depending on the weather. Red is going to be our present weather. And orange is going to be our dew point. So as you can see, we've just underlined and highlighted our information. I'm apologizing in advance for the shakiness of the video. Um, feel free to pause and stop as much as you need to as you go through this activity. So let's just review a couple of the um, pieces that we'll need to use. Remember, when we talk about visibility, there's the percentage. And remember, it does not go more than 10 miles um, a way of visibility. And next to it, we have symbols to represent the present weather. Now, how do we know what the present weather is going to be? We look at this first chart here. So what you can do is take your color that you used for present weather, which mine, remember, is red, and I'm going to make a nice box around present weather. So I know that's where I need to look when I do that activity, do that part of the activity. So you have haze is like an, that sideways infinity, the sideways eight. You have a hurricane symbol, which we see on the weather channel. Um, fog is like the equal sign and drizzle is that apostrophe or comma. So we'll need to make sure we do that when we go over and do present weather next to visibility. Remember wind, if there's calm winds, we're gonna have no uh, pieces next to our circle for cloud coverage. And remember, every long dash is 10 knots, and every half dash is 5. And every time you have a triangle or diamond, it's going to be 50. So it's a simple math problem when we're looking at it. And you can take wind and put that with your color marker as well. Uh, we have barometric trends. Remember, this is whether or not the pressure is steadily happening, happening, rising, is it falling, um, and whatnot. So take your marker and highlight that. Put your box around it. And here we go. Last one is cloud cover. Remember, it looks like a clock. So it depending on how cloudy or not so cloudy your sky is will depend on what we use. So that is uh, 
taking a look at our notes. Now let's start over with reading our first chart. So let's start by filling it in. Here's our uh, little weather station model. So the first thing we need to discuss or figure out is cloud cover. What does our cloud cover look like? Well, it's a circle and it's completely filled in. So if I look back over at my notes, completely filled in means cloudy. So I'm gonna use a pen and write cloudy over here. Then I look for wind. Now with wind, I need to know direction and speed. So let's draw a compass rose to make sure we know our directions. North, south, east, and west. And I'll know that I can fill that in as I need it. Make sure our letters are clear. So let's look at our wind. Wind is that long line and the, direct, and the speed. Hmm, it's going towards the northeast. And what is the speed? Hmm, let's go back and look. One long line looks like 10 knots. So I'm going to write north, east, 10 knots. Like I'm making a knot in my shoe. And we're gonna continue filling this out. So temperature, we look over for temperature. It's up here, our temperature is 72. And remember that it's in degrees Fahrenheit. Our present weather, next to our visibility. Well, let's look back at our notes. Comma looks like it says drizzle. And our visibility was next to it. We knew it was one mile. We saw the number one there. Our dew point is underneath and that's 56. And that's also in degrees Fahrenheit. Precipitation for the last six hours is at 0.10. So I'm gonna fill that in. Our barometric pressure is over here. Now, barometric pressure is a difficult one. This is where it gets a little confusing. This number is less than uh, 10, so we need to put that nine in front of it. So our real number that we're looking at for barometric pressure is nine, eight, six, point seven, MB. That's our unit. And then our pressure trend, we see that there is negative 10 and a slash. The downward slash with no horizontal lines means that it is continuously falling. Okay? So that's just reading a barometric pressure sign. In our next video, we're going to draw one. So stay tuned for the next video. Have a great day.